everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Tammy Writes. Today I want to do kind of a little different to what I usually do for videos. For this one I want to make my TBR. For the past year I have very unsuccessfully been trying to get through my TBR on these shelves of books. There are 70, probably more like 80 now, that have been unread for some of them for multiple years. A lot of them have been new releases and pre-orders that came out at the end of the year. So I just haven't got round to reading those yet. And as uni has been dominating my life for the past four years now, I just haven't had time to get to them. And I have been very obsessed with just library books, reads, rereads, audiobooks, all those kind of things. So for this video, I wanted to make a list of books that I am going to read next year as kind of like accountability. Just here's a list to keep track of because I've seen people do this on TikTok all the time who make their TBRs, usually for the month. But I thought, you know, I'm going to do it for the year. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose 12 books, which would be one per month. And as I'm usually can read about 75 books a year, this will work out very nicely for me. So I can have a nice combination of here's what I am going to read and then still another 60 books to do what I want with. So I think I'm going to start with my pile of hardbacks first. This is largely books that came out in the past year. It's largely my, um, my hardback haul from Waterstones that came out mostly in October. So we're going to start off with the hardbacks that I have, then we'll end on the paperbacks as they're just, you know, light, little, easy. I'll tell you a bit about them, what caught my eye in the first place, and why I'm so committed to reading them this year. Let's begin. The first book that I'm committed to reading in 2024 is House of Roots and Ruins by Erin A. Craig. And this is because I am obsessed with this woman, and the fact that I just didn't immediately devour it upon receiving it is unacceptable for me. So somewhere behind me, I think here, we have Small Favours and we have House of Salt and Sorrows, which is the first book. I don't know if this is becoming like a trilogy kind of series or if this is just a sequel, but this is a sequel from the perspective of one of the other sisters in that book, which is a 12 Dancing Princesses retelling. But this is continuing on the narrative. And like, do I hugely know what it's about? No, but it's beautiful. And I, the House of Salt and Sorrows was the first book I read. I think it was also, it might have also been her debut novel. So also just reading these books and being up to date with a, an author with a very small back catalogue, great, makes you feel special, 100% completion rate, all that. But I fell so in love with House of Salt and Sorrows that it's just consumed me. It's been, did I read it in 2022? Maybe. But I read it a year or two ago now and it's just still consumed me. I think about it daily. I read Small Favours. I loved it even more. So I can't wait to go back into this world. And this, I believe it might also be a retelling of a different fairy tale. I feel like I've read that somewhere. But I can't wait to come back to this. And I'm so excited to be in this universe again. The next book I'd like to read next year is Ordinary Monsters. And honestly, when I bought it, I did not realise it was going to be a monster of a hardback. Which is part of the reason why I did not immediately read this. This is a book that has been on my Goodreads TBR probably since around it came out, maybe before it came out. When did you come out for reference? Oh, this actually came out in 2022. This is still vaguely recent for my standards, and it makes me that I haven't jumped in straight away. But I've had this on the list since I first heard of it because I was just so mesmerized by what it was about. I knew it was going to be such a me book. But again, now that I have it, I cannot tell you anything that it's about other than, I don't know, ma magical people. It is terrific. A book that creeps up on you wearing brass knuckles. A dreadful mountain of wild invention. Supernatural horrors gripping suspense. Haunting, tense, earth shattering. A mix of magic and terror. That's a me book. This is a me book. And this one, purely because I was just so obsessed with it without having no idea what the plot is, I have to read this. Now, I'm going to present the next two books to you at the same time. As they are both Samantha Shannon books. Here we are. So we're going for Priory, obviously because it's become like a, a classic fantasy at that point. It's like this is the book you have to read to truly, I feel like, truly explore the genre. And it's static, it has dragons, it has ace representation, and this one I met Samantha at the book event for Dare Call the Night. And just hearing her talk about this universe of books, even though I hadn't read any of them, just made me fall so in love with her as a person and as a writer and as a storyteller. And then she did do a little bit talking about having a sexual representation in her work. And I, I, 
when I went up to her to give her my books to sign, I just said these will thank you because I, I heard about it, but I didn't know it was like confirmed or just speculated age representation. And I did get it, here guys, not gonna lie. So this one I have to read purely just because I have to. I'm still uncertain if I know Priory came first, but therefore the night is the sequel no, is the prequel. So I don't know if like should I read that first? Should I read this one first? I'm not sure, but I feel like as this one did come out, I will read this one first. But again, intimidated by the size. But I feel like I can allow that for high fantasy, and I feel like you really do need those pages for the world building, usually. And we also have The Bone Season, which is another book that I've been obsessed with. I was going to say because I first heard about it, but no, since I first heard about Samantha Shannon, I've been obsessed with the idea of this. And then I just put off reading it, and then I found out she was rewriting them. And I thought, you know, I'll wait for these to come out. And I'm so glad that these it's been announced now that there'll be a hardback version of every book in the series so I can have a matching set because originally it was complete paperbacks and I don't remember this one side as well yeah but this is the Waterstone special edition that has I believe a little essay in it about the rewriting process which I'm looking forward to greatly as someone who has also recently vaguely rewritten one of my books and I do intend to go back and rewrite my debut but this one another another me book as I know I'm going to love it, and pretty much all of these books are ones that I'm not going to love, which is why I've said, you know, this is the year for the books I love. And now the next two could technically go together, but I am going to present them separately. First up, we have the new Percy Jackson book. <laughs> it is on here because I do love Percy Jackson somewhere, like half of this shelf and half the one below are my Rick Shrine. And this one, also look how fun this is, it's got little tops on the side. Again, I can't wait to jump back into this universe. I love the characters, especially with the show coming out soon. I'm looking forward to returning to this. And also Percy Jackson books, they're known for being like fun and easy to read. So this I can get into and probably smash it out in a few hours, unlike this. And then similarly, we have The Sun and the Star again, because I love the Percy Jackson universe and Nico. I say Nico, I know the Americans say Nico, but I'm a Nico trooper. This is my baby. The fact that I didn't read this, I think I must have got this... No, I got this when it came out. It still has the three Pandora Fortson stick on it. So, ooh, shiny, shiny. The fact that I haven't read this already shocks me, but I can't wait to see my son again. Let's hop on over to paperbacks, which is still largely new releases. Or when I say new, release, new releases, I might mean 2022, so 2023. But I think it's also a paperback, especially with my wrist pain, I can't always hold these giant books. The first one on top of the pile is Only a Monster, which I believe I had it on my TBR, I knew about it. I saw it became, it might have been one of the Owl Crate books, potentially this year. I did not get that box because I was very poor at the time, but I still was absolutely captivated by the idea of this novel. One of my friends read it and enjoyed it and I always know that as is the me book, if she enjoys it, I'll enjoy it even more. So this here might be a 4, a 4.5, maybe even a 5 star read. And now that I know how little and dainty it is, I can't wait to get into this one. But again, cannot remember what this book is about. Monsters and Monster Slayers. I believe the name of the Owl Crate box this was in was Some Kind of Monster. And I think that is a banger book title that I might steal if no one else has it by the time I get around to writing the hypothetical book, which might be a Frankenstein retelling. Next up we have Graceling. These ones I impulse purchased because I was browsing Amazon one day and I saw that this one and they're here somewhere. The first three books in this series were £2 for a paperback and I thought, you know, can't resist a deal. Also, if you ever see my book for £2 on Amazon, go for it. I actively encourage it. Especially as self-published author things, I make the same amount of profit no matter where you buy it. So again, it comes down to if you want to use Amazon, if you don't. But I make the same amount of money, even if it's on sale. So go for it. But again, another book I know nothing about. I impulse purchased it. One of my friends read it and gave it five stars. So, you know, I know I'll like this one. It just is a matter of when I'll read it. This is a high fantasy one, which might be why I put it off for so long, because 
I was going through a phase where I simply did not have the brain power to read anything other than like contemporary fantasy. But I'm looking forward to this one. And if I love it greatly, I have the next two books ready to go. Now we're dipping into where my sort of new fascination with horror came in. It's always been brewing, but as I think horror, contemporary horror, fantasy horror, all these horror reimaginings, which for me started with um, House of Sorosaurus, I've been very much more than just dipping into the genre now. I think, you know, finally something I love is becoming the trend of the moment. So I'm embracing this. First, we have this anthology called A Taste of Darkness, which I got because Rosie Tolbert is in it. And we follow each other on TikTok and I have her first book. Um... This is not good representation. I have her first book, 16 Souls, somewhere over on this far shelf. But I read it and I also adore her as a person. Like she was unboxing, somewhere down here I have Unraveler. Yeah. She was unboxing um, Unraveler promo goodie for the day and because I read an arc of it I said in the comments that I've already read this I love this book so much I want I want all this stuff and she said here have it so I got this for her also this would be like an easy way for me to dip into the horror genre with a lot of short stories and I kind of want to get into anthologies more in general I have a lot on my wish lists and my TBRs and I think I'm mostly fascinated by this and short stories because I'm personally just can't can't write short stories. I'd love to, but my brain is built for long form, not short form. So I'm mostly reading these as a research for a talent I would like to have. Next we have Summer Suns, which is a book that I have started reading. It's another one that I know I will love. It will be five stars. I can guarantee that. I'm just getting around to it. I think I started reading it on the train one day and I was just too distracted in the moment. But this is also, I think, also gets lumped in with a lot of dark academia books. I first saw it alongside, it's here somewhere, These Violent Delights, not the Chloe Gong version, the Meet Again Unraveled one. So these are here, like these kind of spooky autumnal is what this is. But this is like uncovering the truth of your friend's death as lies and secrets left behind, family history with blood and death and backstabbing academia. Ooh. I did know this, but again, I know I'll love this, it's a matter of when I read it. And there's also like, this came out during a peak trend of like creepy hands. And there's another book that I've read that I adored that had ace representation as well, that was just like creepy hands and like viney planty things going on. And I do love those covers. And then finally, the 12th book I would like to read next year is Every Exquisite Thing which was an impulse purchase because I cancelled my study in drowning pre-order because I was getting an alcohol box and then I used the money to buy a lovely little paperback mostly because it was beautiful you can't usually see it. it's kind of by flag colours I don't know if that is intentional I know this is a kind of sapphic um, picture of Dorian Gray retelling reimagining but I'm not, I don't know what the representation is quite yet but this I found out I don't remember I was browsing Goodreads or Twitter when I saw it for the first time but I saw sapphic, I saw reimagining. I usually don't care what the reimagining re is of, I just love reimaginings and retellings. But I also have a slight. I have an interest in the concept of Picture of Dorian Gray. So I'm not huge on the book, and I saw the film with Ben Barnes in, and I don't like that either. But the idea I do love. So I can't wait for this. And this right here is my 2024 TBR. <laughs> It's heavy. It's entirely smart for Shatland's fault. So those are 12 books I'm planning to read next year. Maybe one a month. Maybe I'll read them all in January. We'll see how it goes. But here I have a nice guideline of what I want to read. So when I do inevitably get decision paralysis looking at these shelves, I have it all planned out. So in the comments below, if you have any idea of what you want to read next year, let me know. If you've read any of these books already, as I'm very far behind the trends, do tell me if you enjoyed them below. Even if you did not enjoy them, I'm very interested in hearing that. And thank you for watching this and I will see you next time. Bye.